Right now at four, White House in turmoil. House Resolution 21, resolution calling on Vice President Michael R. Pence to convene and mobilize, declare President Donald J. Trump incapable of executing the duties of his office. I object. Democrats launch a two-prong effort to remove President Trump from office. It is my strong preference that colleagues call on him to resign. As the district prepares for an anxiety-ridden transfer of power. You know, we're very concerned about our communities. The inauguration poses several unprecedented challenges. Security changes happening now to protect our city. Oh, I really don't want my neighborhood and neighborhoods around me to experience this sort of violence and, and vandalism. And the steps district residents are taking to keep rioters away. Then COVID vaccines now available. District residents over 65 can now get their vaccine. How to make an appointment and who's next in line. And the bottom line boost for some Maryland families. News 4 starts right now. And first at four this afternoon, a city and a country reeling from last week's capital siege are trying to find a way forward. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Lawson News. And I'm Sean Yancey. Some members of Congress believe that path forward includes immediate removal of the president. Today, the Democratic-controlled House introduced two measures, a formal call for Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment and a single article of impeachment that accuses the president of inciting an insurrection. More violence is a fear as we get closer to the Inauguration. This afternoon, we learned at least 10,000 National Guard troops will be here in D.C. by Saturday, up to 15,000 for the inauguration. D.C.'s mayor also wants all formal protest gatherings canceled. The National Park Service is also taking precaution. Today, it closed the Washington Monument and some other facilities to visitors until January 24th. This all comes as law enforcement agencies look back at what caused last week's security failure and how to prevent it again. We have team coverage this afternoon. Pat Collins is looking ahead to inauguration security, but we start right now with Alice Barr and the rush in Congress toward a second impeachment. Alice? Pat and Sean, we're getting a clearer picture of just how much worse the situation at the Capitol could have been. And Democrats are hoping that that could bring more Republicans around to take action against President Trump. As more shocking images and accounts emerge from last week's siege on the Capitol, pressure is mounting to hold President Trump accountable for his role in inciting the deadly violence. Today, back in the building where they were attacked by a pro Trump mob, House Democrats formally introduced one article of impeachment, incitement of insurrection. We cannot simply let this go because we can never heal as a nation if we don't have justice first. It comes after Republicans sidelined a resolution calling on Vice President Mike Pence to replace the president under the 25th Amendment. I object. Sources familiar tell NBC News the vice president is unlikely to act, increasing the emphasis on impeachment with a vote as early as Wednesday. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she has the votes to impeach, writing, quote, the president's threat to America is urgent and so too will be our action and telling CBS's 60 Minutes. He has done something so serious. Uh, that there should be prosecution against him. Beyond impeachment, Democrats hope to block President Trump from ever holding public office again. But they're hoping for bipartisan support with only a few Republican backers so far. I actually do believe that the president has disqualified himself. The Republican-controlled Senate is in recess until January 19th, the day before President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. All 100 senators would have to agree to come back any earlier, and that is unlikely to happen, setting up the possibility of an impeachment trial after President Trump has already left office. Back to you, Pat and Sean. All right, Alice Barr, thank you. Reporting live. Just in, we are hearing from the family of fallen U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick for the first time. He died from injuries he received defending the Capitol last week. In a statement, his family writes in part, there really aren't enough kind words in any language to describe how sweet Brian was. He was truly a lovely, humble soul, and we're missing him terribly. Officer Sicknick's family goes on to thank the U.S. Capitol Police Force and our community for its support. Each day, more disturbing video surfaces of those rioters attacking police officers. D.C. Police Chief Robert Conde spoke with one of his officers who was beaten with American flags. 
rioters trying to take his weapon from him and use it against him? We believe that, uh, that they were. Um, that there were, uh, there were several items of, of property, MPD property, district government property that was stolen uh, from him. Uh, thankfully, his weapon was not uh, taken from him. As we look ahead to inauguration, local leaders are urging more communication and cooperation with federal partners to ensure we do not see a repeat. News Force Pat Collins continues our team coverage with a look at the security planning that's been underway for months. The inauguration day clampdown has begun. And in light of the riot last week at the Capitol, security measures are likely to get tighter and tighter every day. We begin at the mall. The Park Service said that the Washington Monument will be closed beginning today and through January 24th. The reason? continued threats to disrupt the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. In addition to the monument, officials say they reserve the right to close other park facilities and roadways to protect the public. Now, over to D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. She says she believes the inauguration should be public, but she says public gatherings during the inauguration period should be canceled. I am requesting the, de the Secretary of the Department of the Interior cancel any and all public gathering permits in the District of Columbia and deny any applications for public gathering during the period January 11 through January 24. On Inauguration Day, expect to see all kinds of fences in our city and all types of law enforcement officers deployed. Coming up at 5 o'clock, we're going to hear from the Secret Service. I'm Pat Collins, News for Washington. A lawmaker has now tested positive for coronavirus after sheltering in place during the riot at the Capitol. New Jersey Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman got that diagnosis today. She said her exposure may have come after sheltering with lawmakers who didn't wear masks. Many of the rioters on Wednesday were maskless. The Capitol physician sent out a letter warning lawmakers of possible COVID exposure and urging them to get tested. Now to the latest headlines on the pandemic. Much needed help is coming to struggling Maryland residents. Today, Governor Hogan announced an economic relief package that would include direct payments of $750 for families. Uh, individuals will receive $450. This relief will go directly to more than 400,000 Marylanders in need and no application of any kind is necessary. These checks uh, can begin going out immediately as soon as the Legislative Relief, Relief Act is passed by the legislature and I sign it into law. On our NBC Washington website, you'll find a link to a tool that will tell you if you are eligible. Today, the Small Business Administration began accepting applications for the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, only businesses that haven't received money before can begin applying today. On Wednesday, other businesses can apply for their second round of funding. Consumer reporter Susan Hogan will have more on the application process coming up. Virginia is moving to the next phase of its vaccine distribution plans. Those in Group 1B are now eligible. That includes people over the age of 75, as well as teachers, police and firefighters, postal, transit, and grocery workers. Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey will have more on the rollout in about 10 minutes. Today, Virginia is reporting more than 3,500 new cases and nine deaths. The positivity rate is 16.7 percent. Maryland is reporting more than 3,000 new infections today, 29 deaths. The positivity rate is 8.5 percent. And D.C. is reporting 202 new cases and four deaths. The positivity rate there is 6.7 percent. Today, Mayor Bowser announced that senior citizens are now able to register to get their coronavirus vaccine. News Force Mark Seagraves joins us live now to tell us about it. But, Mark, we understand there, there's only a limited number of doses set aside. So how is this going to work? Uh, very slowly, Pat, very slowly. And you're going to be frustrated. Senior citizens are already 
calling us, telling us how frustrated they are with this system. There are 85,000 DC residents who now qualify, who are over 65 years old, who can now register. But as of this afternoon, the first week's reservations are completely booked. You're being told to sign up for a text message to, uh, to be notified when more appointments become available. It's just one of the indicators of how popular and how much demand there will be. Thousands of frontline workers have already received their shots in D.C., and now senior citizens are eligible as well. The COVID vaccine is free. Those with insurance will not be charged a copay. Um, those without insurance will not be charged or turned away. Those who are eligible can sign up online or by calling 311 for assistance. You have to be 65 years or older to qualify and a D.C. resident. The district only has 4,000 doses available this week for seniors. District officials say distribution continues to be limited by the low number of doses allocated to the nation's capital. So far, D.C. has received just over 45,000 doses and administered more than 26,000 doses. This week, an additional 8,300 doses will be arriving. Mayor Bowser also warned that ban on indoor dining that was set to expire on Friday could be extended. It is likely um, that we will extend to coincide with the public safety emergency. So the closures of indoor dining in the district was originally done because of COVID concerns, but the mayor says she's going to extend it past Inauguration Day for public safety concerns. That announcement should be made official tomorrow. We can also tell you in the numbers that we're reporting on how many doses the district is getting, that does not include the second shot that everybody needs. That's a completely different tally. So those numbers don't conflict with one another. And one other thing our, our viewers have been asking about, about a month ago, the mayor announced that she was giving out $1,200 checks to gig workers whose unemployment was running out. There were 20,000 people who qualified so far, only about 9,000 of those checks have actually gone out. Pat, back a lot to of, you. A lot of folks still waiting. Hey, Mark, do we have any data on how many doses of the vaccine have been wasted? You know, Pat, I asked the director of the Department of Health that very question, and I've been asking the mayor's office to release that data on a regular basis. They refuse to do so, but what they told us today is they actually don't know. They are getting anecdotal evidence that, of course, you know, because of human error for whatever reason, there has been some wastage, but they don't know how much. They say by law, these providers, the hospitals and, and the, you know, CVS, Walgreens, Safeway, they're all required to report back to the D.C. Department of Health any wastage, but the director of Department of Health today they said they, in fact, are not doing that mandatory reporting. And if they don't start doing it soon, she said some of these providers could lose the ability to be providing the vaccine at all. Pat? All right. Mark Seagraves. Thanks so much, Mark. All right. Some warmer weather this week, but we could get cooler by the weekend. Let's check in with Doug, who is working from home. What's going on in the weather today, Doug? Well, not a whole lot, guys. I mean, we've got a, a lot of cloud cover across our area. It's a little bit of a cool day, too. But take a look. A storm system just out of the south will pass us to the south. And I'll show you what that brings in for the rest of this week coming up in just a minute. Coming up next, as D.C. braces for the possibility of more unrest, local residents are making Don't Rent D.C. trend. I thought to myself, I really don't want my neighborhood and neighborhoods around me to experience this sort of violence and, and vandalism. Hear from the man who started the movement, then. A single test that can detect COVID-19, the flu, and a dangerous respiratory virus. They only have to get swabbed one time as opposed to having to get swabbed multiple times. What it could mean for your family's health. Coming up next on News 4.